Good day everyone, this is Alvin again from the Philippines and welcome to my 6 leaderboard for Miss Universe 2020 Part 2, Asia Pacific and Africa. <music> Welcome to my 6th leaderboard. Again, this is already the part 2 which talks about my current top 15 for Asia Pacific and African region. Well, before we begin, let me just say that if you haven't seen the part 1 which is my top 15 for the European region, it is already uploaded to my YouTube on my YouTube channel so you can just go ahead and check that out. But right now, this is part 2 and after this, I will be uploading part 3 which is my top 15 for the Americas. But for now, here's my top 15 for the Asia Pacific and Africa starting with my number 15. Korea. Park Hari. Great photos, beautiful face, and as what I have said before, I love the combination of sweetness and empowering vibe and aura in her photos. But aside from that, I just wanted to see more from her. Number 14, Malaysia. Francisca Lu Hong James. Francisca is okay to me. I love her recent photo shoots, especially the swimwear photo shoot. The background and the way she stood out in it was just fire. That was really beautiful. But as a contender in Miss Universe, I am not 100% sure yet because I am struggling, honestly, to find a reason on why should I put her in my top 5. Simply because there's a lot of strong contenders from this region already. All I can say for now is keep improving, keep working, and keep on transforming. And hopefully, she will be up there very, very soon. Number 13, Nepal. And Shika Sharma being one of the recently crowned candidates in the group I am so happy seeing her transformation they have released amazing photo shoots and she looked great in it I also loved her even in candid shots and she's such a sweet and lovely woman but honestly I really wanted her to work on her public speaking skills especially on her convincing power I've been talking about it as part of her areas of opportunity and if she can work on that she could possibly take one of the spots from this region number 12 Japan Aisha Harumi Tochigi they are not giving us as much updates as well but I do love the diversity that Japan has embraced one ag once again with her selection as their representative. I am excited to know more about her stories, but let me just say that this woman, if this woman gets a placement, I will not be surprised at all. They might be preparing something amazing. So hopefully, we'll get some more and more and more updates from Miss Universe Japan, and of course, more speaking as well, so that we'll get to know how she does when it comes to public speaking. Number 11, Ghana. Chelsea Taiwi. I have so much love for Chelsea. I mean, she's just a burst of energy, great personality, radiant aura, and her smile is just infectious. She has also shown some tremendous improvement since she was crowned, and I'm hoping that we'll see more of those in the future. She speaks great too, but we'll see how strong she is because she will be in my Instagram live because I will be interviewing her on the 13th of February so be sure to watch it out and hopefully you will join us so that we can see how strong she is in those areas number 10 Singapore Bernadette Bell Ong I am so glad that Bernadette is growing on me I love watching her in the interviews that she do that she did she's very natural she's beautiful and i love her tone when she speaks she doesn't sound rehearsed and that's one thing that i appreciate about her i am looking forward to how she will be styled and prepared pageant wise specifically talking about the catwalk and outfits because if she could nail those then she could potentially be one of the dark horses this year number nine myanmar thuzar went Luen. This one is a super beauty. She's actually one of the delegates this year whom I think got one of the prettiest faces in the competition. She has a great figure, she can walk, and she's great on stage. But I wanted to see her work on it even more and build that commanding presence when she's on stage. She's good, but I wanted her to level it up even more. I am not sure how strong she is in interviews, but I hope she is great in it as well. Aside from that, she can speak English though. I have seen some videos of her where she speaks English and that's great. With preparation, Myanmar could pull a great placement because I myself 
just love this beauty so much and I don't want her to go to waste, honestly. Number 8, Vietnam. Nguyen Tran Can Van. Vietnam is such a lovely and beautiful soul. She is very active in doing social works and recently posted about her time when she did her cause with One Body Village. Aside from that, she and the entire Team Vietnam are really working hard because this woman is so stylish. I mean, whatever outfit she wears, whatever color it is, she can always nail it. But let me just say again, the moment we can hear her speak in interviews, and if she is amazing in public speaking, I can assure you that she will skyrocket in this ranking. But then again, for the millionth time, hopefully we'll get to hear her speak. Okay, number seven, Cambodia. Sarita Reth, all I wanted to say is that Cambodia surely deserves all the hype that she's getting. Aside from the fact that she's beautiful, she also speaks very well, and I saw some of her interviews, and her personality was just shining in every interview. I can really see her doing very well, and could potentially put her country in the semifinals for the first time. She's been active... She's been actively working and preparing for the pageant. It would be amazing to see how she transforms even in the next weeks to come. Because, of course, she's already great, but there's still something that I wanted to see from her. Number six, the Philippines. Rabia Mateo. Rabia have already shown some tremendous transformation, in, and even if we are not getting that much updates yet, but I am glad that they are showing a bit more compared to before. I saw her doing some social works, which is amazing. Her styling and that queenly aura is improving. I guess the reason why I can't put her on top is that we wanted to see her speak more. I mean, I know that she is a great speaker, but unlike other contestants who have been using their social media, their voice to speak when it comes to important causes, important issues. That's also what I wanted to see from Rabia. We wanted to see more because at the end of the day, Miss Universe is all about is all about finding someone who could be a great representative for the organization, a spokesperson. So hopefully we could see more of that from Rabia. But nevertheless, amazing, amazing job, amazing transformation as, as, as what I've said. She's doing really well, but we just wanted to see her more especially when it comes to the field of public speaking number five indonesia ayu molida well ayu has always delivered when it comes to styling and beauty department she is also a professional model and we saw how she walked and she is phenomenal she's going to be phenomenal when it comes to that area and she's also got a degree in law which is also another amazing point she has a platform that she started in 2017 called Sanyum Desa and she's been actively doing in that organization as well she's been actively participating in that of course she's spearheaded that before I was craving to see her speak especially in English but I was so glad because I was given the privilege of talking to her during my Instagram live interview with her but let me just say this I appreciate her so much for doing her best in speaking English because I was quite expecting that she might use an interpreter but she sat there with me by herself and confidently answering my questions in English. I was very happy because as what I've said, she was very honest, she was very confident and I, can, I felt the sincerity in her answers. And it wasn't perfect, but I got her point, I got her message, I love her very genuine way of answering. And if she did that well in speaking English, imagine how strong those answers would be if she spoke in her native language, which she is more comfortable with. I believe it is very important to build that connection and relatability when you are answering questions and speaking publicly. And if Iris won in 2016 by not speaking English and with, uh, with an interpreter, I truly believe that winning is also possible, not only for IU, but also for everyone who can't speak English fluently that are competing in Miss Universe this year. Again, it is more on building that connection when you speak. Number four, Thailand. Amanda Obdam, well, do I see Amanda winning Miss Universe? Of course I do, which is why I am really dying to see and hear something impre impressive and amazing from her. 
They have flooded us with so many updates and photos and I commend them for working so hard and we have seen how stunning Amanda is and there's no question about that anymore, about her beauty, body and performance. We know that she's going to stand out in those areas. I also watched some of her interviews, especially the recent ones, so that we can already get away with our first impressions during her final question performance in a Miss Universe Thailand pageant. So I would say based on the recent interviews that I have watched, watched, she is improving and I appreciate her for that. But I am still craving to hear something from her in an interview that would make me say, that's Miss Universe. I haven't felt that yet. I mean, I have felt that based on her beauty, but in interviews, I haven't yet. So hopefully we'll feel that Someday. I hope you get what I mean. Number three, India. Adeline Castellino. Adeline has been very, very active in the last weeks when it comes to different events and social media posts. We have seen some swimsuit photos, different shots which showed how beautiful she is, different videos where she speaks and showed us how great and consistent she is when it comes to public speaking. And I have to truly commend her and possibly the organization as well because I have seen how she transformed. She looks so much better fresher and ready to slay. Well, maybe there's something else I would ask since I haven't seen anyone interview her with some random questions. I mean, not recently, of course, but I would love to see her being asked random questions by any interviewer because I we, we would still watch it. I wish to see those because we wanted to see how she's going to handle the questions because there's always a difference between speaking in videos compared to answering random questions when you are being asked, like in an interview. So hoping to see that, but nevertheless, it will all depend on how she performed now, and if she could live up to all the hype we have given her, then India could probably take home their third Miss Universe crown. Number two, South Africa, Natasha Hubert. There is no doubt in my mind that Natasha will be giving South Africa a great fight to defend the crown this year. She has been consistently beautiful ever since. I mean, I have never seen Natasha in a weak or poor styling. And that is the consist consistency that we wanted to see in a contender or in a future Miss Universe. And aside from that, she's just an ex excellent speaker. And what's amazing about her is that she speaks and knows how to deliver the message in a tone that is both sweet and commanding and powerful which is a great combination i have watched her interview with miss universe brazil and she was stunning and phenomenal and i'm sure that she will bring all those qualities and a complete and improved qualities in miss universe but my current number one and my flag bearer for the asia pacific and africa is Australia. Maria the Till. Maria to me is a great symbol for empowering women in all ways possible. I am super super glad that she featured and talked about the hype issue on her Mind With Me segment on her Instagram account and I just find it empowering. I have been talking about this many many times at how impressed and amazed I am with how she is utilizing her social media to influence, inspire, empower, and create a ripple of change and I believe that she would reach even more people if she wins Miss Universe, which would be amazing. She is beautiful, she's got a superb figure as well, and her walk is looking great. So overall, I am super confident in saying that Australia is undoubtedly coming with such huge waves in a competition, and I really wouldn't mind crowning someone like Australia as our future Miss Universe. So that's it. These are my current top 15 for Asia, Pacific, and Africa. What do you think? What are your thoughts about my ranking, about my commentaries, and do you think someone in this ranking deserves to place a bit higher? Please don't forget to share your sentiments below because I am reading all of the comments. Again, don't forget to leave your comments below. Don't forget to give a thumbs up and share the video as well. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe because you'll be seeing more of this video in the future. For now, thank you very much and have a wonderful day from the Philippines.